I know I don't look like it, but I actually love to go camping. I've been wanting to try an outdoor folding table for a while, and I've been looking at different materials and really want to experiment with PVC. So after a couple of failed attempts, I finally came up with a design that utilizes lightweight and inexpensive materials that you can pick up at your local Home Depot. The parameters I set up for myself were that the table had to be fairly compact, easy enough for me to carry myself, and look good enough that I wouldn't mind using it indoors as well. I think the experiment was a success, and I got to try a couple of fun techniques along the way. So whether you like camping or you just need an extra seat for grandma to sit at Thanksgiving, keep watching and learn how to make your own folding table. This video is sponsored by my friends at the Home Depot. Knowing this table was designed to use outdoors and could possibly be exposed to moisture, I chose to use Western Red Cedar for the tabletop. Cedar is a great choice for outdoor furniture. It holds up really well to the elements. I wanted to trim down some of the weight of the tabletop, so I ripped the pieces that would work as the frame down to four and a half inches wide. Using a circular saw to break down material is a lot more comfortable if you have a piece of rigid foam insulation underneath your wood, as well as a comfortable pair of knee pads. I've been wearing a gel lined pair from Husky lately, and my knees have no complaints on this concrete floor. Once the frame pieces were ripped to the correct width, I took them to my miter saw to cut them down to length. I also ripped two more boards down, 5 eighths of an inch even narrower. Those pieces would function as rails holding the slats of the tabletop. I applied a healthy amount of waterproof wood glue, then placed the rails onto the sides and attached them using one and one quarter inch wood screws. I then began to connect the frame pieces together. I pre-drilled and countersunk holes on the ends of the frame pieces. I then aligned the ends perpendicular to the sides, pre-drilled, applied some more glue, and then drove two and a half inch wood screws to connect the pieces together. To cover the screw heads, I filled the countersunk holes with 3 8 inch oak wood plugs. I need to mention, if you do plan on using this table outdoors or in a moist environment, you need to make sure that you use galvanized or non-corrosive fasteners. While the glue was drying on the plugs, I decided to work on the slats and realized I had a big problem. I accidentally built the frame an inch and a quarter too wide. So quickly, I pulled out the plugs, unscrewed the frame, and cut off the excess length. With the frame built at the right size, I could then apply the tabletop slats. I applied more waterproof glue to the ends of each slat and then spaced them a quarter inch apart, resting on those rails. I used a little piece of scrap wood that was a quarter inch wide to help me get my spacing even. Once all the slats were in place, I secured them by driving one and one quarter inch brad nails through the face and into the rails below. At this point, the glue on the hole plugs was dry, so I used a flush trim saw to cut off the excess. Next, I began working on the leg assemblies. I told you I was gonna use PVC, and for my first couple of experiments, I did use PVC, but then I decided ABS is lighter and stronger and would work better for this application. Although I did use PVC pipe on a different part of the build, which I'll show you later. I used my miter saw to cut the black ABS pipe into my leg lengths as well as stretcher pieces. I then found the center of the pipes and began drilling 3 8 inch holes all the way through perpendicular to the edge. To hold the leg assemblies to the tabletop, I needed to create some wooden brackets. I traced a bell shape onto some of the remaining fence pickets and then cut it out with my jigsaw. I created four brackets the same size and then four brackets that were an inch and a half taller. To attach the brackets to the tabletop, I decided to use these galvanized steel angles from Simpson Strong Tie. I was hoping to reduce any sort of movement or play between the brackets and the screws, so I applied a thin layer of five minute epoxy to the back of the angles before aligning them on the brackets and securing them with 5 8 inch screws. 
I found the center of the brackets and then drilled 3 8 inch holes about 3 quarters of an inch up from the bottom edge. Next, I began the dry assembly of the legs. Starting with one of the smaller brackets, I placed a washer over the hole, then inserted a 4 inch hex bolt. Then came another couple of washers, and then the first leg piece. That was followed by another washer, another bracket, another washer, and then finally a 3 8 inch wing nut. I placed the brackets and legs in the corner of the underside of the tabletop. I needed to make sure the alignment of all four legs was correct, so I only drove a couple of the screws into each of the angles. If you think this is pretty cool, make sure you tag that like button down below. After getting all eight brackets and upper leg pieces attached, I verified that they could swing freely and that there were no clearance problems. I then used one and a half inch T connectors to hold the stretchers and the lower part of the legs together. With the pieces just dry fit together, I measured from the underside of the table to determine what my leg height was going to be. Standard dining tables are around 30 inches tall, so I made a mark on the lower leg at that distance. Since the legs on the taller brackets are mounted an inch and a half further from the tabletop, I had more material to remove. After test fitting all the ABS pipe pieces together to make sure that both legs were the correct dimensions, I then used a cleaning solution to clean the areas where the joints would connect. To hold all my fittings together, I used blue ABS cement. I discovered the cement sets up very quickly, so I would recommend having a speed square on hand to make sure that all your joints are at 90 degrees. The leg assemblies needed some diagonal support arms, so this is where the PVC pipe comes in. I started with one inch diameter, but then decided I liked the look of three quarter inch instead. Don't worry, I have all the measurements in the building plans, which you can find by clicking the link in the description box. To make the support arms easier to attach to the legs, I wanted to create a flat section on each end of the pipes. Working on one end at a time, I used a heat gun to soften the ends, and then one of my metal face clamps from Craig to smash it flat. Once it was cool, I clamped the PVC to my workbench and used a belt sander to round the corners. Thanks for coming back and checking out a new video. And if this is your first time you've seen a pneumatic attic video, welcome! Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you never miss a new project. I then found the center of the flattened section and drilled a one quarter inch hole. Once the support arms were shaped, I began to paint the leg assemblies. I used a spray paint that has a primer built into it. You'll notice looking at the support arms that I ended up extending the flattened section of the arms to about two and a half inches from either end. While the base dried, I turned my attention back to the cedar top. I wanted to leave a lot of the rough texture of the wood, but nobody likes splinters, so I used a 220 grit on my orbital sander and finish sander to help smooth over the edges and get rid of the worst of the roughness. Next, I applied a spar urethane finish to the wood. Spar urethane is really great for outdoor furniture. It's completely water resistant and it holds up well to UV exposure. However, I will say it took about three days for two coats to finally cure on this. And I live in Arizona, which is a pretty dry place. So just be prepared to wait if that's the finish you choose to go with. I wanted to protect the fresh finish on the tabletop, so I laid down a blanket when it came time for assembly. I placed the tabletop face down and then aligned the first four brackets. I slid the leg assemblies onto the bolts and remembered to use washers. After I attached the final four brackets and added the wing nuts, I could align the legs and attach all the brackets to the underside of the table. I used a speed square to get the legs as close to perpendicular to the tabletop as I could. I then angled one of the support arms between the leg and the side of the frame. 
I marked the hole locations using a sharpie. I drilled quarter inch holes through the legs and 3 8 inch holes through the sides of the frame. I attached the support arms to the wooden frame using 2 inch hex bolts, washers, and wing nuts. The connection between the arms and the legs needs to be removable so the table can collapse. Instead of bolts, I used 2 and a half inch clevis pins and locking hitch pins to hold them in place. I thought of a lot of ways to lock the legs to the bottom of the table, but then ended up deciding that a pair of screw eyes and a bungee cord would be the quickest and easiest way. The last step was to add a U-bolt handle to make the table easier to carry. I used a measuring tape to center the U-bolt on the outside frame of the tabletop. I marked the location and then drove two 3 8 inch holes. I replaced the back plate, but switched the original nuts for locking or jam nuts. I didn't tighten the nuts all the way down, so that way the handle could move up and down and be more comfortable to use. Ready to see it in action? The dimensions when the table is folded up are about 42 by 29 and less than six inches deep. I love the look of the cedar slats and the spacing will be great for drainage if I ever decide to leave the table outside. So how stable is it? That's the big question, right? Speaking honestly, there is a teeny tiny bit of wobble back and forth, but that being said, it's still just as stable, if not more, than any other folding table I've ever used. I'd say it's definitely strong enough for the next camping trip. I would even feel confident to use this table with a bunch of rowdy friends at game night. When it's time to put the table away, breakdown takes about a minute, similar to other folding tables I've used as well. Remember, if you want the building plans, there's a link in the description box below. All the materials, including the hardware, were just under $50 for this build. And as for carrying it myself, the total weight is about 26 and a half pounds. Not too bad to manage, even for my noodle arms. If you like furniture that folds, you should check out my folding mobile workbench video. Or maybe this one as well. I really appreciate your guys' love and support. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, remember to give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the Pneumatic Datic channel. Thanks.